They said, no, he's not among the descendants of kings. We will not accept him as a prophet. And that is not the choice of God. You have conspired with him against us, etc. They are now attacking their prophet. This is the children of Israel. This is the Israelis and the way they act. They give you promises, they give you their oath, and they don't stick to it. Now, the Prophet had no choice but to show them that this is a sign from Allah, this is a, a choice of Allah, and he needed to show them a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to them, what if I show you a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is really a king, and uh, as I, a Prophet, is relating to you the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, if you bring a miracle, we might believe you. So he said, look at the sky and you will see the sign that Samuel is your king. And what was in the sky from far away, suddenly the Ark of Covenant, this box that had remains of Musa alayhi and the tablets and the stick, etc., was flying, carried by angels that they did not see. See, in, in the biblical story, they claim that they saw the angels. They did not see the angels. They just saw the Ark traveling and flying in heaven until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it from their enemy by a miracle. And it was in front of them. They opened it and the ark is back. So now they had to believe that this is the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Samuel Qalut said to them that I will lead you to victory, but you must fight. And they gave him his promises that they will fight with him. So he said, get ready for battle. We will attack and reclaim Jerusalem. Now, at that time, the Babylonians have taken over. And then it was taken over by other tribes and so on. So now they had a big fight that they must get ready for. Most of them refused to fight. Only a small group of them accepted. Now, on, it is narrated that only 8,000, 8,000 only, from the thousand, hundreds of thousands of the Israelis, only 8,000 joined Samuel for the fight. The rest did not even move. After all these promises, and after all of this claim that we want to have victory back and so on, but they still refused. So, with that, Talud the king, Samuel the king, had no choice but to fight with only a small army. But again, a small army that is ready to fight is better than a large army that is weak in spirit. So he ordered the army to move, and they did. They moved and marched towards Jerusalem. At the crossing of the river, many scholars and historians say it, this was the Jordan River. So apparently they were at that time in Jordan, not in Palestine, or southern Jordan, not Palestine. So they moved and they reached that river, and he told them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have told your prophet, and he told me, that you will be tested. You will be tested before the battle. Only those who pass the test shall fight with me. And they said, we're ready. Uh, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you with a stream, with a river. And you are not allowed to drink from the river, except to take a sip. That is all you're allowed. But if you truly drink, then you're not faithful, you have not obeyed, and you cannot fight with me. And they said, no, we will obey you. So they reached the stream, and they started to cross, and most of the army stopped, and they drank and drank. And Samuel and the prophet Simon were looking, what is this? Where are the promises? Where are the oaths? It's all gone now. It is narrated by the Prophet ﷺ that the number who really obeyed and crossed the river without taking a drink except a sip were 314 people. Just like the number who joined the Prophet ﷺ in the battle of Badr against Quraysh. So only 314 now are with the King Samuel and the Prophet Shamuail. Now this small army is going to face a major battle. So they started to be reluctant. We're weak. We're small in numbers. We're not well trained. What can we do? The Prophet told them, 
How many times a small group have defeated a larger group if they hold fast to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So they started inspiring them. The king and the prophet started inspiring them and started to show them and tell them about the stories in history where a small group would fight and win a larger group. And they told them to pray, O oh Allah, bestow patience upon us. Give us victory. It is only from you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach them that victory is not, is not from humans. You do whatever you can, but Allah has his ways. So don't trust on your numbers. See, before that, they were counting on the numbers. Now, it is only faith that you should count upon. So the two armies met, two different armies, a small army with limited numbers, but believing in Allah, and a huge army with huge weaponry, but they disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they started, the believers started to pray, O oh, our Lord, pour on us constancy and make our steps firm. Help us against those who reject faith. Before the battle started, the king, Samuel, declared that whoever kills Goliath, in Arabic his name is Jalut, whoever kills Goliath will be appointed the king after me and will marry my daughter to inspire them to fight strongly and to inspire them to attack the king himself. Now, the Goliath was a huge, powerful fighter, never lost a battle in his life. And usually at that time, before the battles would start, the two armies would face each other. In the land between the two armies, usually one of the fighters would come out from one of the groups challenging who would fight me. And then another one comes from the other group and they will start fighting either, either on foot or on horses. And this will continue for a while to show their abilities and to show their power. And then the fight would start. So this time Goliath came out of the army and he was so huge, a giant. And he asked for someone to challenge him. Goliath was the strongest among the army of the enemies. Some, some historians exaggerate with his size to the level that is not mentionable. <laughs> Again, but we know that he was huge in, in size. None of the Israelis, this small army, was to the level of Goliath in, in size or in, in experience with fighting. And everyone was so afraid. So the king, Samuel, started to call upon his people, upon his soldiers. Who would fight him? He will be my heir. He will be the king after me, and he will marry my daughter. Who will fight him? And none of the strong fighters would accept that challenge because with that challenge comes death. And then a small man, very young, many say that he was 15 or 16 at that time, his name was Dawood, in English, David. He was not still at that time a prophet. He was a soldier in the army. He came out and he said, I will fight him. And everyone was surprised. 16 years old boy would fight this giant. What experience do you have? And more even interestingly, he did not have any weaponry with him, except a, a slingshot that he would rotate and then throw a stone with. So he came out and Goliath started to laugh. He said, young man, go back. I don't want to kill someone like you. It's too young to die now. Send me somebody who's stronger than you. I don't want to kill you. But Dawood, David, alayhi salam, replied, but I want to kill you. He's fighting the leader of the enemies who are disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Goliath came forward with anger and Dawood alayhi salam put three stones in his slingshot, started to rotate it and with one strong shot hit him on the forehead and killed him immediately. And that was the end of the king.
in one shot from far away, he was gone. How often by Allah's will, a small force vanquishes a big one. With their leader slain, confusion spread among the ranks of the Goliath army. Samuel Talut ordered an attack and they did attack and in no time chaos, disorder was through the enemy's army and they fled all over and within minutes the whole battle was over and the believers won. Again, think about the situation with the Muslims. Now we see so many, whenever we claim that we must go back and uh, reclaim our great history and so on, many would come to us and say, these people have uh, the nuclear bomb, they have this, they have that, etc. But how many times a small group that is weaker would win with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Simon the king, uh, Samuel the king, kept his promise. Dawood was married to his daughter and after his death, he became a prophet. There are stories in the Bible though that show a fight or a, a hidden quarrel between Dawood and Samuel the king, etc. This has no basis in Islam. Samuel was a good man, a religious man, kept his promise, and Dawood was the husband of his daughter. So all of these stories are the Israeli stories that I've read the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it is full of attacks on religious figures. Almost no prophet, no messenger of Allah was saved from their ridicule or their claims of bad attitude or bad behavior. No prophet, no messenger was saved. And Samuel was no exception. He was not a messenger, but he was a king, and still they attacked him. They attacked even Dawood as we will see. So now Dawood becomes the heir of the land. He becomes the king. And not only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the kingdom, but he also gave him prophethood. Dawood full of abilities, great justice, great rule, following the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for him. And 460 years after Joshua, now comes a prophet and a king again. And for the first time again, after so many years, prophethood and the message, religion and the state united under one leadership. That changed the history of Palestine, the history of Israel, of the Israelis, everything changed when Dawood became the king. A new prophet for the children of Israel, the son of Aisha, from the descendants of Jehovah, the son of Jacob, a great messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the greatest that the children of Israel had after Musa and Harun. They had so many prophets, but among the greatest they had after Musa and Harun were Dawood, and Sulaiman, David and Solomon, peace be upon them all. They entered Jerusalem, they conquered the land again. Dawood was ruling almost all of Palestine, except some strips in the northwest, next to the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. Other than that, most of Palestine was under the rule of David. For your information, only 99 years, only 99 years, the Israelis governed most of Palestine. That is the time of Dawood and Sulaiman. Other than that, they had only small places, and most of the time they did not rule. They were immigrants and pushed out, etc. And now they claim that they are the owners of Palestine. The first people to live in Palestine were those who migrated from Arabia. And I have shown this in my book, Palestine, yesterday, today, and the future. And uh, it's available in many languages. Anyway, 